Jessica Stay is with me. And I'm joined now by Allie Pereira. She had a situation similar to this, didn't you, where personal photos were leaked. Can you, can you relate to the humiliation that Tyler must have felt? Yeah, I can most definitely relate. Um, when I was 16, my ex-boyfriend forwarded a naked picture of me to everybody in his contact list, and it went viral through my entire high school. Uh, either of you, Erica or, or Allie, do you think the fact that this was uh, two males together makes it in any way different? It seems to me that women have been victimized by this sort of voyeurism for quite some time. Do you guys agree with me? Yeah, I agree with you, but I don't think that it makes it any different. I don't necessarily think that it's a hate crime because um, I was tormented and I don't think that it was a hate crime because during the civil rights movement, a hate crime is an absolutely terrible, terrible thought out crime. And Ravi wasn't there pushing Tyler Clemente off of the George Washington Bridge. And a hate crime is a crime where somebody has an intense hate and it is thought out. And Ravi did not hate gay people. I, I would have to disagree a tiny bit, um, mm -hmm. only that uh, I think there was definitely intent the first time that he looked at the video camera. Maybe he was surprised. He found out that, you know, he was gay and he was, you know, having, uh, you know, an interaction with a man, but then to go back and tweet that you're going to have a viewing party of this, I definitely think the fact that he was homosexual had a had a huge part of this, so that, oh, wow, you're going to see a guy-on-guy -guy action. I don't think it would have been the same thing if he was with a girl. I really don't. And Shane, I'm going to go out to you. <laughs> what about this being a hate crime? Shane. Well, um, the definition of a hate crime is that there needs to be a biased motive as a uh, an intent. And so I, I don't think we have enough information. I, I've been watching the trial. Um, our organization, Campus Pride, has been following this from the beginning. Um, and, and I don't know that we have enough information, but there, it's very disturbing. Um, the, the fact that the young man today was sharing, he's curious. It was curiosity. The way he said it was just, uh, it, it was really disturbing that we have young people today who have so much privilege being straight that they don't see the repercussions of what it means to be gay and how difficult it is to come out. Is the, is the gay community, Shane, fairly unified in his perception and outrage uh, about this particular episode? You know, I, I think that the gay community nationally uh, is uh, pleased that finally we're talking about bullying and suicide of gay youth. Uh, it took seven kids in September of 2010 to die before nationally we started talking about these issues. And so um, I do think we're, we're pleased as a national movement that we're finally talking about lesbian, gay, transgender young people. And, and is there any sort of perspective on how severe the punishment should be for this young man, uh, Robbie? Well, you know, I, I lost my dad to a drunk driver, and, you know, there's never a punishment that will fit the crime because you'll always have lost Tyler, um, and the family will never find a punishment that will bring Tyler back. And so, um, you know, the criminal system, uh, the court system will decide uh, what the punishment should be. Um, Campus Pride, our organization, is focused on making sure that colleges take responsibility for students like Tyler in the future and actually, you know, offer safe housing options and uh, a way for out gay students to identify on their college admission form so that way colleges can be sure to retain them and make sure they succeed academically and ultimately just feel safe on their campus. Ali, I want to go back to you since you, you were the one that really had exp has. Ex I mean, none of us have actually been in this position. You, as a young adolescent, were in this position. H how how mortifying must it be? Can you can you tell us? It's absolutely humiliating, and um, I can completely relate to Tyler. And I don't think that it is a. Um, something that just relates to sexuality. So I don't think that it's just um, strictly a hate crime because Tyler was gay. So I think that you have to look at it that way. It's absolutely humiliating. It's mortifying. It's embarrassing. And it's shameful how, because how, it puts how, the shame uh, on Allie, you. how old are you now? How, how old are you now? I'm 22. I'm 22 and it still okay. follows me everywhere. I have to, I mean, I have right. to tell my employers. And, and you, it's, it's awful. Do you think people your age are just too casual about how you relate to the digital domain and pictures? And 
you know, you, you actually are the one that sent the picture. In Tyler's mm -hmm. case, he was intruded upon, so there is a little difference there. But do you think you and your peers, I mean, you're the youngest person on this panel here, do you think you guys are just too casual about all this? Yeah, I mean, we live in a day and age of iPhones, of Skype, of Uvu, and I mean, just the other day at work, they were talking about apps where people were spying on their boyfriends or their husbands and tracking where they were, or they were um, logging on to their phone calls. So is it just them being curious of Tyler's sexuality and who was in the room? I don't think you can say that. I think that maybe they were curious as to who was in the room because the man that he was with was a lot older. So, I mean, that you have to look at that, too. We live in a day and age where kids... No, yeah, we do. No, Ali, I know, I know what you're saying. In fact, that's <laughs> what, some of what the story, if you read the story, they were actually concerned about the safety of, of the roommate. It's a complicated story. Mm -hmm. Erica, I've got about 40 seconds. Please close us out here. What, what are your final thoughts? Absolutely. I think there's a bigger issue here at hand, and that's education about social media. We are in, Not every kid has sex. We have sex education, but every kid texts. 24 7 every kid is on Twitter Facebook so it needs to start in the schools and we have to be experiential about it and teach them that you know you have to be responsible and accountable for your online life Allie you agree with that yeah I think so I think Allie, you agree